Okay, so this is a demonstration of a head to toe exam. Obviously at home you won't have some of these tools. So when you're at the point where you're supposed to do the fundoscopic exam where you're looking at the back of the eye or the exam where you would look inside the ear, just you know, say this is what I'm doing at this time and show me how you would position yourself. So if you're doing the fundoscopic exam, if you need like a spoon to help you, just so I know that you know exactly how you're supposed to position yourself, at least, since I can't actually see you do it um, with the proper tools. Okay, so we know that you were roomed already by the medical, the nursing assistant or medical assistant that took your vital signs and checked your eyes. Anything bothering you today? No. <laughs> So I'm Kathy, I'm going to be your nurse practitioner, and I'm going to do an exam, and I will tell you everything I'm doing. And so when you guys are doing your exam, you need to do the same thing. You need to verbalize what you're checking so I know that you know what you're actually looking at. So we start, I'm looking at Malin, I'm going to say, I'm going to just take a look at your scalp and head, any pain in your head at all, no. so I'm looking at to be sure she's not pulling her hair, there's no hair loss and no rashes, no pain with that. Can you squeeze your eyes tight? Okay, open them. Bring your eyebrows up. Good, show me your teeth. Move your jaw up and down. So there we go, okay, you're done. There we've checked cranial nerves seven and five. I'm gonna feel your sinuses. Any pain if I press on your sinuses? Nope, good. I'm looking at the external structures of your eyes, eyebrows, eyelashes. I'm gonna push down so I can look at the conjunctiva, which looks normal. I'm gonna check the muscles of your eyes, so you just look straight ahead at me. So I'm gonna do the cover-uncover test to look for strabismus. So you just look straight at me. Good, Good excellent. Now I'm gonna check um, this is for ocular nerves, um, to check the pupil, um, direct and indirect reaction to light. So I'm going to shine the light in each of your eye a couple times. You just look straight ahead. So I'm looking, here's direct. Now I'm looking at indirect, which it did both. I'm doing it on this side, direct pupil constriction, indirect, the opposite pupil constricts. Then I'm going to have you follow this pen light um, with your eyes. Good. So what I checked there is um, accommodation and convergence. So as the pen light went in further, the pupils constrict and her eyes came together. So I checked that and I'm going to have you follow my pen light with your eyes. Looking for... Nystagmus, checking cardinal fields of gaze. So with all of these tests, I've checked cranial nerves three, four, and six. Excellent. And we know that you can see, because you did your eye tests, that's cranial nerve two. So now would be the time for the fundoscopic exam, which unfortunately for you guys, you won't be able to show me exactly. Luckily, I've seen that you guys do that a couple times this semester before everything changed. But take a spoon, just so I know that you are lining up your eye with the other person's eye and getting close enough to their face that you would be able to see it. So Madeline, just look at like a point beyond my shoulder. Look straight ahead. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. That looks nice. <laughs> Everything about you is beautiful. So, there we, that would be the end of the eye exam. So now I move to the ear exam. So, cameraman, if you want to go right here. My name is Gail. <laughs> so I'm looking, I would look at the ear. You only have to look at one. I'm looking at the external structures of the ear, looking behind at the skin. No issues there. Does it hurt at all if I push on the ear at all? And then I would, because I can, look in the ear. Um, I'm pulling up and looking in to look at the membrane. 
<laughs> Again, beautiful. What are you? Are you being weird? Okay. So just show me how you would maneuver the pinna for your patient and what you would do to look inside. Obviously, unless you have an otoscope, you won't be able to do that. Okay. Cameraman. <laughs> so now I am going to touch your nose. Any pain if I do that? If you go press down on one nostril and breathe, do you feel, does that feel like the air is going through okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then do it the opposite side. Okay, I'm gonna have you do that again. So that we're testing nasal patency. I'm gonna have you do that again. Cause we're gonna check Oh, cranial nerve one, which is the olfactory nerve. So um, occlude one nostril, good. And can you smell that? What does it smell like? I don't know. It smells familiar, but. I think it's like a peppermint, spearmint thing. Do you smell it? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not, that's enough. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to take a look in your mouth. So I'm looking at your lips. I'm gonna have you stick out your tongue. Good. Say ah. Good. So she had phonation. Her uvula ro rose midline. She has larger tonsils. Um, so they're plus two now that they have healed from their infection. They stuck out your tongue. And then you move it back and forth. That's those um, other, the cranial nerves that test for the tongue function. Then I'm gonna look at the, you can put your tongue normal. I'm just gonna look at the buccal membranes and then I'll have you go like this. Good. Do you smoke? Good. Good. Obviously if your patient's, well you better not. <laughs> but if your patient <laughs> smokes, that means that you would have to feel inside their mouth too for any lesions. Okay, so now I'm going to feel your lymph nodes. So tell me if anything is tender at all. So it's pre-auricular, posterior auricular, jugulogastric, submandibular, submental, anterior cervical, posterior cervical, suboccipital, and then have you raise your shoulders up. That's super clavicular. So no um, swelling glands. Have you push up against my hands? And that's the spinal accessory cranial nerve. Okay, can relax that. So I'm looking at your neck. Sorry, trachea is midline. Can you see what I'm looking at, camera person? Okay, trachea is midline. She is of an age where you wouldn't necessarily check um, carotid breweries, but that's part of the exam, so you still have to do that. So I'm gonna put this on the side, have you take a deep breath in and hold it. Okay, and breathe out. Obviously you don't wanna do that longer than 30 seconds for the patient. Deep breath in and hold it. Okay, breathe out. All right, so now, let's see, cameraman, I'm gonna have you go back over this way, go behind her, because I'm gonna do, well actually, before we do that, I'll have you come up right here. I'm gonna feel the thyroid. And so when I come from the back, I'm marking where my fingers are. Here is the um, suprasternal notch and the that's where I mark where I'm at. I put my fingers here in the part where the sternocleidomastoid inserts on the clavicles. And I have my fingers right there, not too high. Okay, can you swallow for me? It's hard to do when someone asks you to. So I pushed her trachea to the side to feel the thyroid. I'm going to do the same over here. Go ahead. I can't. That was a lame swallow. Yes, but that is correct. Okay, now you can come back here. Yes, ma'am. So we are going to look, we're going to do what would be the chest lung assessment on the post, posterior side. So, um, Madeline, if you could kind of hug yourself. So remember, and then we'll have you lean forward. That gives us more surface area for her, her um, lungs. So first, if this would be a regular patient situation, I would be looking at the skin for any marks. Um, 
I'm gonna feel, so this is part of the spine assessment too. I'm feeling your spine, any pain when I do that? Or if I touch on your ribs? Okay, I'm gonna have you take a deep breath in. That's symmetric expansion, okay. And my hands move together the same way. I'm gonna have you repeat 99. Out loud. 99. Yeah. 99. 99. Good, okay. I'm gonna tap. CVA tenderness, chopping your kidneys, any pain with that? So I'll have you at least in at least four sections check chest percussion. So here I am, here's her scapula. So I'm going adjacent to both scapula and then at the lower part of the lungs. Just at least do it four times, on a, you know, back and forth. So that is normal chest percussion sounds, so I'm between two ribs. Very nice. Good percussion, Madeline. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna listen to your lungs. So obviously the textbook, and certainly if she had lung complaints, I would be, um, I would be listening in several areas around the scapula in the mid clavicular line because that especially on the right she has a whole lung lobe there that i would miss otherwise but for the purpose of this video if you listen in six spots right near the scapula and underneath the scapula you don't want to go too low sometimes i see students go really low if you're below the rib cage you're not listening to her lungs anymore you're listening to her kidneys okay Take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth. Excellent, okay. Camera person. <laughs> say my name. Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> so you would do the same thing when you did your cardiac exam. You would do the same thing to the anterior chest, but we're not going to do that and you don't have to do that either. So since she's sitting up and we'll go right to her upper extremities. So you only have to do it on one side just for the sake of time, but obviously if this was your patient, you would do it for both. So I'm going to feel your shoulder. Your elbow, any pain with that? Wrist, hand, I'm looking at your nails and skin. Um, it's warm, I don't see any region, lesions or rashes. She has good capillary refill. I'm gonna feel your radial pulse. Good. All right, I'm gonna have you move your arms, shoulders up and down. Like this? Yep, back and forth like this. Any pain, and then towards the back. Any pain with moving at all? No. Good. Can you bring your good wrists? Oh, they cracked. Any? So unless, oh my goodness, <laughs> your almost cracks. I like to, with a regular physical exam, would just be sure I don't feel any joint deformities and that there's nothing I can visibly see and have them move their joints so I can get an idea of how well they move. I don't always do a full, unless they're complaining of something in particular, then I would focus on another joint more closely. This for a female would be, an adult female would be when you could start the first half of the breast exam and then go to the second half. We're obviously not doing that. So, oh, it's the breast. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we're, over here again. we're gonna have you lay back. So we're gonna do the cardiac exam and the abdominal exam. Oh, whoa. Apparently you don't get a pillow, sorry about that. So you can just rest normally. At this time, <laughs> you could notice that like, if she had an issue, you could see if she had any jugular venous distension, which she obviously does not. So you need to find the points to listen to the cardiac valve. So here's her clavicle, the first <laughs> intercostal and the second <laughs> intercostal, sorry. So here I am listening to the pulmonic valve. And then I go across and listen to the aortic valve.
And then you go two intercostal spaces down for the tricuspid. And then across for the mitral. And then it's always easier to hear in case there's a extra heart sound. I'll have you just turn to your side. Awkwardly, okay, <laughs> thanks. Don't fall off the table, that's bad. And I'm gonna listen to those lower <laughs> heart sounds again. <laughs> Apparently Madeline is also very hungry because I can hear the <laughs> sounds way up here, okay. Are you all right? Yeah. Okay, so now we move to the abdominal exam. So for a patient, obviously I'll be looking at the skin. I would look at the contour of the abdomen. If there's any scars, you'll be surprised. People will say they've never had surgery and then you'll find huge scars on their abdomen because they forgot to tell you they forgot. Um, after inspection is auscultation. So I'm gonna listen in four quadrants, starting at the right lower quadrant. I can tell, I know I was gonna hear bowel sounds right away because I could hear them when I was listening to her heart. Because <laughs> apparently she's very hungry right now. Okay. I'm of the opinion that then you should do percussion, especially if you're worried that the person has splenic enlargement because you don't wanna push down directly on an enlarged spleen because you could cause it to bleed. So I would just do percussion in the quadrants. So these are normal bowel percussion sounds when you're not contracting your muscles, because <laughs> it's air. So that's good. Here's the location of her spleen. If there was an actual splenomegaly, that would be dull. So I know now that I can safely palpate her abdomen without hurting her. If, say, I did that and it was dull, then I would start my palpation like this across the abdomen towards the spleen so I could see how big it was. Now that I know she doesn't have that, I can just do light followed by deep palpation. Now, you, Madeline, look like somebody that might be ticklish. Yeah. So in that setting, I want you to put your hand on top of mine She's not going to feel the belly, but I am. The, pro the reason I do this is because it's really impossible to tickle yourself. So if you're going to do it with me, the odds are is you won't laugh as hard. Okay. Although you might just because it's me. <laughs> Ready? It's hard to tickle yourself. So that's, or unless you're Madeline, I guess. But that's light palpation. And then I would do it deeper. So here, hold your hand on me like you're not a corpse, okay? Like actually put, pre well, not that hard. Okay, ready? So that's deeper. <laughs> okay, relax your abdomen, because if you are laughing, then I can't feel anything, I just feel your abdominal wall. So now I'm gonna feel deeper into your liver, okay? So relax, you can't? Give me a minute. Okay. <laughs> ready, okay. Take a deep breath in, go out, okay. All right, good. At this point, I would do, I would check the femoral arteries um, and I would check the um, lymph nodes in the groin, which we won't do. You're laying down, so this is the best time to assess your range motion of your hip. So you just have to do it with one leg. Move your leg out. This way? Yep, out. And then across your body. And then up. And then down. Did that hurt at all? Nope, so then I would just feel the outside of her hip, but that's fine. Here's her knee. Don't Can you that. bend your knee up and down? Good, no pain with that at all? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's your, I'm gonna at least bring out one foot. I I'm not sure how, <laughs> well, how many crumbs we have in their sock here, but okay, so move your ankle, move your toes. Okay, good. So you have full range of motion. I'm just looking at your your feet. I'm checking capillary refill. I'm checking your, okay, relax. Checking your pulse. So that's her dorsalis um, fetus pulse. And then I can check 
posterior tibial. And technically, when I am examining somebody, if I can feel the pulses down here, I don't really need to feel the pulses in the popliteal femoral area because they are obviously okay. Otherwise, I couldn't feel the pulses over here. Um, but you certainly could do that too. If you're feeling the popliteal pulse, you have to bend their knee slightly and you really need to push into the knee cavity. Are you all right? It's <laughs> sick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, good. So now I'm going to have you sit up. Just a couple things left to do. You're doing great. Yeah. Take both of these off. Okay, so now... We've gotten through a lot of the exam. What we need to do is finish the neurologic part of the exam. So I'm already kind of getting a lot of neurologic information from Madeline just by talking to her, just following directions, essentially doing what she's supposed to do. So I already kind of know some information. So now I'm going to test um, sensation. Thank you. So I know what to do. What I want to be sure is that she feels that it feels the same on both sides and that she can distinguish between soft touch and a more sharp or dull touch so that I know that she, her neurosystem is good at incorporating sensory data. So this is, what the, whoa, sorry. This is what the sharp is and this is soft. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to know what the, okay, so close your eyes. Tell me, do you feel this? Yeah. Is it soft or sharp? Soft. How about this? That's sharp. Okay. <laughs> soft. Soft. Sharp. Ow. That was a little sharp, sorry. Sharp. Don't stab soft. her. Okay, so you, she's able, thank you cameraman, I will not stab her. Okay, so, okay, we did that. Now, I'm gonna have you close your eyes. <laughs> Put out your palm. I'm gonna put an object in your hand and Matt, don't look at it by touch. Tell me what you think it is. Okay, cool. It feels like a spring. <laughs> a nail, a nail, sorry. It's a screw. That's like the same thing. That's a nail. It's not a nail. Oh, whatever, same thing. Okay. Well, okay, close, close your eyes. Close your eyes and do it again. I'll pick an object she's familiar with. Close your eyes. Let's see. Okay, I should have said that originally, I guess. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing. Close your eyes. I'm going to draw a number in your palm, and you tell me what it was. So what the key was stereognosis. This is graphesthesia. She should be able to distinguish what I'm writing. Ready? Three. Good, she got that. Okay, the, the last thing we're gonna do, and you can do this, if you could do it on all extremities too, if you, especially if you were concerned or she reported a neurologic complaint. Okay, so you're closing your eyes. I'm gonna be moving your thumb. You tell me what direction I moved it. Down. Right, so that's kinesia, I can never say that word, it begins with a K. But what it, I do is she's able to tell me where the position of her body is in space. So that's all sensory integration of information. So now we have to check her reflexes. Ready? So now this part can be tricky because we need her to be relaxed. So you're at home, if you don't have a reflex hammer, you could also use Anything that you could tap the side with. Sometimes people use like the side of their stethoscope as a way to do it. Something that you can tap the tendon with. And you have to locate the tendon. And that's often the problem when people are doing this. They're just blindly tapping instead of tapping the area in question. So Gabe, if you could come in a little closer. When we are trying to check the triceps um, deep tendon reflex, here's her Olecranon process, right above that, if you feel, you'll feel like a, you won't be able to see it, but I'm feeling a string right here. And that's where her triceps muscles tendon inserts into the elbow, and that's what I'm trying to feel. And when I hit it, if this stays relaxed and it works, her arm should come out like this. Okay, relax. Did you feel it? Did you see it? Try to do again. 
Do you want me to do it again? Is that cool? Hardly. It's their smaller reflexes. They're not like the knee. And I usually, for those smaller tendons, um, hold the tendon with my thumb so I know exactly where it is, and then I strike my thumb because that's a smaller tendon. And so sometimes if I just went like this, I don't know if I'm going to hit the right thing. So I'm a little bit more controlled about it. So now the next part is I'm looking for her brachial deep tendon reflex. So right now, here's her brachial muscle. I don't know why I tapped it. <laughs> and I'm feeling where that brachial muscle tendon is, and I can feel it right here. So I'm going to relax your whole arm. If I tap it correctly, I should cause this to move. Are you, are you not, you're really relaxed? Ha! See it? I think we all saw it. Okay, well, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, so that was the brachial. The brachial radialis is sometimes a little bit harder. So you're finding the tendon along the side. And again, it should be an inward movement of the hand. It's a little more subtle. Did you see it? I think you just did it. <laughs> oh, because I you hit it so it. hard, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if that was a really good one. The other ones look good, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. I didn't get that. <laughs> now, the knee one. So, in order to distract people, Gabe, come this way, please. In order to distract people from this, because they know exactly what you're doing. Pull, put your hands together like this and pull, pull them apart. Well, I feel her patella tendon, <laughs> which clearly is fine. Do it again. Okay, good. Wait, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> now, the one that can be hard for people sometimes is the Achilles one. So now, camera, Gabe, you're gonna have to come down here so you can see. It's not your toes. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hit the Achilles right here, that attendant tendon, which is pretty easy to find, it's pretty thick, just like the patella. And when I hit it correctly, her, she will, um, her, yes, thank you. But <laughs> it's very hard sometimes to get people to be sure their feet stay relaxed, because I want it to go this way and she's already that way. So I'll try and see how sensitive she is. Okay, don't stop. No, don't do that. So I'll show you my trick. I that, one. that one there was a little, I don't know if the cameraman got it though. Okay, stand back up, Gabe. Here's my <laughs> trick. Okay, you, I want you to kneel on this exam table with your heels off the side. Perfect, are you gonna fall? No. Move a little closer in, so it's just your, no, 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 that's out. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Okay, stay like that. And let your feet drop. I'm sorry. They're not relaxed. I'm sorry. What? Well, relax them. Is it relaxed? Yeah. Do you see? Wait. Do you see it? It's a little bit easier for them to relax it when you do it like that. <laughs> okay. Now we just have a couple of neuro tests left. We want to look at your cerebellar function. So you have to check lower, upper and lower cerebellar, cerebellar function. So, Gabriel. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to hold my finger out here. I want you to take one of your fingers, touch your nose, and then touch my finger. Okay. Okay, the next thing is take your hands, put them on your um, thighs, and move them like this, really fast. <laughs> I don't know why you're doing your elbows like that, but okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, come down and stand. Whoa. Okay, walk. Yeah, Gabe, go to the side. Walk towards the wall on your tiptoes. These are lower extremity cerebellar functions. Okay, turn around. Walk back on your heels. All right, and now I'm gonna have you stand up. This is the Romberg's test. So you're gonna stand, stare forward, close your eyes, 
and I'm seeing if she can hold her position a tiny bit of sway is okay, but if she felt like she was going to fall, then that would be bad. She's fine. You can open your eyes. Then the last thing is, since you're standing, we can check the range of motion of your spine. So, can you twist? Good. Can you go side to side? <laughs> can you lean backwards? Ooh, okay, can you touch your toes? No, I can't. <laughs> well, I just, I just want to be sure your spine is okay. Okay, perfect. And that is the end. Thank you. Your, your bill is in the mail. <laughs> Woo!